guys, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you a buyer's guide on the Alpha 147 GTA. The Alpha 147 GTA was introduced into the UK in 2002, mated with the 3.2 V6 Buzo engine. It produced 247 horsepower and had a top speed of 153 miles an hour. The car does have wide arches on it, so it is 15 millimeters wider each side at the front and the rear. There were 5,029 GTAs built, and just over a thousand of them were steady speeds. And I do believe uh, most of those are now ended up in the UK as uh, imported from Japan. Now when you're starting to do your preliminary searches for GTAs, one thing I would tell you to do is not to discount the higher mileage cars. The higher mileage cars with good service history are probably going to be a better and more reliable purchase than the, the lower mileage sort of garage queen cars that haven't really seen much of the road. Now, Back to the unit now where we'll continue the rest of now, the uh, guide. I'll start by talking about necessary upgrades because the main complaints when the GTAs came out were the handling and the braking. They were a little bit wallowy when they came out from the factory and the earlier ones were fitted with 305mm brakes and they were then later upgraded to the 330mm brakes. A lot of people have upgraded them already, but there are still some cars out there with the smaller brakes. As you see, they are the 330mm brakes. Now, suspensions-wise, it is pretty much necessary to upgrade the suspension if you want a really good handling car to go with the power that this engine produces. Um, mods, I would say, definitely to do is upgrade the springs and suspension and also upgrade the anti-roll bars to the, the thicker anti-roll bars that you can buy. Uh, another very popular mod are exhausts. Uh, this one is fitted with a wizard exhaust and it is extremely loud but is uh, definitely the loudest exhaust you can get on these GTAs. Another necessary modification is to do with the gearbox. You can upgrade them to a Q2 or a Quaif differential gearbox. So let's talk about the exterior body parts which are expensive or go missing or break. There aren't actually that many of them to go wrong to be honest, they're quite a simple exterior car. Um, the main and hard ones to get are the jacking point covers on the side skirts. They haven't been made for many years and when you do find an original one you're probably looking around 150 quid to uh, buy one single replacement. That's what I was quoted last time when I was after one for my 156 GTA. But there is a guy now who is selling 3D printed ones. They're coming out to around £55 each delivered, so uh, it's a good uh, cost saving on those. Uh, wing mirrors, as with all 147s, they do tend to seize. They should fold in, but as the all aluminium wing mirrors, as they get older, the aluminium starts to corrode and they start to stick together. The side skirts are getting very rare to find now, but to be honest, there isn't really much to go wrong with them unless you've had an accident. The front grills and fog lights are, sorry, indicators are very, very hard to get hold of. As you can see, the ones in the lower bumper there and there, they're the uh, unique to the 147 GTA. And there aren't very many of them left at all, if any. The main centre grill is easy enough to get, that's just a standard 147 grill. Now the headlights on this car are Xenon and they're a thousand pound each to replace. So do make sure that your headlights are working perfectly fine. They can suffer from water ingress. There's a seal along the back of the headlight which screws in and that can uh, get damaged very easily. So do make sure that your, all your headlights and your bulbs are working fine. Door handle hinges, they can break. So when you're opening the door, this hinge here will snap and if you pull it too hard, the whole handle will come off with it. Um, they're just standard 147 door handles, so you should be able to pick those up relatively easily and you can still get them new 
they also did a new style door handle from sort of 2007 onwards uh, and they weren't all aluminium they were plastic so they are a little bit more uh, hard wearing now one mod you can do with the exhaust is fit a dual exit exhaust so you get an exit on each side of the the back of the car and now what a lot of people do will just hacksaw the rear grille and the rear bumper and that's not the best way to do it so if you do have a twin exit ex exhaust on the one you're going to check just make sure that it hasn't been butchered interiors on GTAs you do get a few upgrades compared to the standard 147s the main one being the sports leather seats they are made of a pretty decent quality leather so they do hold up pretty well this car has covered 115,000 miles and it's just got a little bit of discoloration a few wear and tear scratches but they're actually holding together pretty well indeed replacement leather seats are available on the used market and you'll be looking anywhere sort of 450 to 600 pounds for a set of seats the subtle differences with the GTA you've got a diff slightly different binnacle obviously it revs higher and the MPH is up to uh, 180 miles an hour not that you're going to get there but uh, hey ho the dashboard colouring of the stereo and the heater control dials are a little bit darker than a standard 147 and normally standard trim you get the Bose sound system in there um, the Bose sound system itself isn't amazing but uh, it is better than standard and the standard stereos you get with the GTAs are just the same as 147 ones so my advice is just to uh, rip it out and put a modern stereo in there if you want something that uh, works a little bit better rather than look standard. You do get cruise control as a standard on these, on pretty much most 147s. They do suffer with the clutch switch underneath the pedal. That can sometimes seize and the cruise control won't work any longer. It's just a case of twisting in a new sensor and they're not expensive, they're only about £15. You also get a different headlining compared to all of the 147s. It's sort of like a darker black headlining. You also get black sun visors and a black alarm sensor. The other little niggles and stuff you can get inside the GTAs, you can get a rattle from the armrest because the seat bolsters are larger. Um, when you're sitting inside it and you're a bigger guy, you can get a rattle from here, but that can be stopped just by putting a, uh, a little bit of cloth down there to stop it from touching as you can see it's making that sort of noise when you're sitting in there um other bits and bobs coin trays can break the fronts can fall off and they can't return but again a tenner will get you a new coin tray the heater dials the controls inside and the lcd display can sometimes break they are just the same as a standard 1471 and you can change the fascia on it so you can keep the same color so again they're not expensive nowadays i wouldn't probably pay more than 20 quid for a set of heater controls the glove box handle can sometimes become loose and fall off. It is a sealed unit, so to repair it properly you need to get another unit, but some people do cut a hole in the back of here and then just pop the nut back on the end of it. The worst part of trim to wear is this plastic here. As you can see, it's got a coating on it and it's also coated on the window switch as well and it does start to come off and look quite unsightly. You can buy covers, uh, leather covers on eBay for about 20 quid so you may want to get some of those and um, you can also take them off and clean all that coating off but uh, it is a little bit time consuming. Now onto the underside of the GTA and the areas to look out for mainly are rust. There are a few areas where they are prone to rusting, uh, mainly on the back of the floor pan here. As you can see, they have been repaired already. There are little drainage holes and they uh, start to, to rust. So the best thing to do is seal them up and uh, treat them and get them covered up. There are also some more halfway down the floor pan as well, but they don't tend to suffer that badly here. Another area are along the inner seals here. They can rust along there and also I would watch out for bad jacking damage because that does cause a lot of rust. Uh, this has been jacked quite a few times on the sills as you can see the marks where it was but it has been in the workshop this week and I've repaired all the way along there, got rid of all the rust and resealed it all up again. So I am going to be telling the customer when he takes it for tyres and things like that get them to jack it up anywhere but the, uh, the sills. Now, a fresh spot, now the cars are getting older, especially on 147s, are literally under these side skirts where it rots. As you can see here, I have had it off and repaired 
all there. Uh, it was just light surface rust, so it's all been treated and then covered over again. But yeah, if you uh, get rust rot behind there, it's uh, quite a lengthy process to repair. I have also seen the catalytic converters start to block up or crack or deteriorate. They're not that expensive to replace with a used one. They're about 150 pounds. And another common fail point are the flexi pipes on the exhaust. But again, they're not too expensive to change. And you can also get upgraded equal length ones or stainless steel ones like this is here. Onto the brakes, steering and suspension. We shall start with the brakes first. You always get the Brembo brake calipers on the GTAs. There are two versions. The early versions were the 305mm and the best ones are the 330mm Brembos which have much better stopping power because the original reviews were complaining that the brakes weren't very good but these 330 do make a big improvement. Now you are seeing a few failures in certain areas on these calipers and the main one I always get are sticking pins to remove the pads. They sometimes are not lubricated when the pads are done and they uh, corrode into position and they're very difficult to get out. Uh, the bleed nipples on the brake calipers can sometimes sneeze, sneeze, seize and snap off. You can buy new fitting kits, they're only about 20 quid so every time you change your pads I'll probably uh, stick a new fitting kit in there as well. The pistons can sometimes start to seize up inside the caliper, but you can get rebuild kits and it's probably about 120 quid per caliper to get one refurbished. If you're looking at the car and you can manage to see behind the wheel wells, check for rust in the arches as well because we are seeing some now where they're starting to rust around here, but most enthusiasts will now be starting to uh, protect the inside of the uh, arches. As you can see, this one has been done already. I would also check for brake pipe corrosion at that point there. And also, if you follow the pipe underneath the chassis, all there, sometimes that cover there is missing and they will start to corrode there. A lot of owners upgrade their suspension, um, normally Bilston shockers, which are normally quite reliable, and e-back springs. But I am noticing the quality of e-back springs this last sort of five years has gone downhill. They used to be the quality to go for in the replacement upgraded springs. But as you can see here, this one has broken and it's only been on the car, I think, about three years. And you need to change them in pairs, ideally. And you can't buy them in pairs very easily anyway. Um, so you'll probably find that you need to buy a set of four. So do check those when you are looking at the potential of buying it. As a lot of these GTAs do spend a lot of time sitting on people's driveways rather than being driven, sometimes the handbrake cables can start to rust and start to seize on or not give you the best brake effort when using your handbrake. They're not expensive to change, they're about £40-50 pounds for a set and it is a DIY repair, it will take you about no more than an hour on your driveway. The front wings are quite hard parts to get as well now. They are not standard to 147s, these are actually wider and they're not the same wings fitted to the GT. Uh, they are different down the bottom here. Um, but as you can see in that picture there, they do suffer a little bit with rusting in this point here and also this point here. What you will find when it goes into a body shop to get repaired, they will sand the rust down, stick some filler over it, and then paint it. But give it sort of 12, 18 months, the rust will start to come through again because it's rusting from behind the panel. So make sure that it is repaired properly if you are getting your car to a body shop. Common areas for oil leaks. Now, I can't really show you too good on this engine because it has uh, an aluminum under tray on it. But you can get oil leaks from between the gearbox and the engine, which is the main crank oil seal, which can fail. That's a, an expensive repair, unfortunately. Uh, another area is behind this front bumper. You have an oil cooler with some pipes going off it, which go along the back of, underneath the engine, up to the back of the engine. The pipes can sometimes corrode and start leaking. There are aftermarket choices. And there are also some people making uh, adapter parts now so you can fit uh, just different connectors and then get some standard hoses from like Demon Tweaks or something like that. Another area where I tend to see oil leaks from nowadays on the sort of the higher mileage engine cars, there's an oil leak from the side of the engine. It comes as a plate which goes in front of the crank, the crank pulley and that seal there can start to leak. Some people will think, oh no, it's a sump leaking, but nine times out of 10, it is actually that seal there, but it's a cam belt off job 
to repair that leak. One of the most popular upgrades on GTAs are the exhausts. This is a Wizard stainless steel exhaust. They are very good quality, but they are very, very noisy indeed, especially coupled with stainless steel front pipes and catalytic converter delete. It does add quite a little bit of extra power uh, to the engine, but uh, you do sacrifice it with a lot of noise, but the noise is a very nice noise. It makes it sound very much like a supercar noise. So if you want to turn heads, at the traffic lights when you're uh, out on a Sunday afternoon posing. Uh, get this exhaust and uh, you will definitely turn heads with the awesome sounds it produces. Another common point for oil leaks are the rocker cover gaskets. Particularly the rear one causes the most problem because it's the most difficult one to change. You've literally got to remove the whole plenum to get to it and it's uh, a little bit labour intensive. But if you run your finger down the back of the uh, gasket and you can feel oil on it, that means it's leaking and what can happen is oil can come out of that gasket, drip onto the exhaust and give you a smell of burning oil inside the car. So if you have that fault when you're test driving it, have a look out for that. Now onto the Achilles heel of the GTAs. They are awesome engines and I love them to pieces and they are probably one of the best engines Alfa has ever produced but they are very labour intensive. If you think you can get away with buying a cheap GTA and not spend loads of money on it, you are gonna be wrong. They are expensive cars to maintain. The parts are getting quite expensive to purchase nowadays. They do have a few failure areas, but they are worth every single penny. Onto a few of the faults you can find with the engine. They have a few oil leaks around the engine, but I have probably mentioned those already. The cam belt covers, if not fitted correctly, they can start to wear from the inside out by really rubbing on the pulleys. They are getting very hard to find nowadays, so uh, do make sure that, that is all in one piece because you can't get them new anymore. I'd imagine somebody will 3D print them at some point in uh, the future. This intake pipe is very prone to going brittle and cracking, but you can buy aftermarket versions of that. Uh, one of the main failure points under the engine bay is the ECU. As you can see, it is mounted to the back of the engine, so it has a lot of vibrations and a lot of heat cycles. So we are finding nowadays that ECUs can fail. They will present you with either immobiliser failure on the dashboard or the car won't start. That can be down to the ECU. They don't make them new anymore. Second hand, you're going to be paying north of a £1,000 for another ECU. What some people are doing with the ECUs is taking them off the engine, making a mount and putting them on the back of the bulkhead instead, where it is a little bit cooler and suffers a lot less vibrations. Maintenance of the engine. Oil and filter changes can be a little bit troublesome because access to the oil filter is very tight indeed. So you do need uh, some special tools to get in there to get the oil filter off without uh, tearing your hands to shreds. Cam belt maintenance every four years or 48,000 miles. Some people say five years, some people say less, but I tend to recommend four years, even if you're not doing the mileage because rubber on the belts can go brittle. Cost-wise, you're gonna be paying about 650 pounds for a cam belt change and water pump change. Now, with water pump changes, the water pumps are held on with probably 12, 14 little 10 mil nuts and bolts. And when you're changing the water pump, sometimes these nuts can seize and snap. So if one of those snap and you can't get to it to drill it out, the engine's got to come out. So you sort of build your work up to have a lot of stuff done at once. Say, for example, your car needs a clutch. Try and get it to hang out until it needs a cam belt as well. And then it's easier to drop the engine, do all the maintenance work on it with the engine out of the car, and then pop it back in. Yes, it's expensive, but it will still to save you some labour in the long run and some heartache, especially if you're doing a cam belt and one of the water pump bolts break. And also with water pumps, you need to make sure you fit the metal impeller water pump. There are two options. One's plastic, and the plastic cracks after a couple of years, and the engine will overheat, and you can knacker your engine. So always fit the metal impeller water pump. I think price difference is probably about four or five pound difference. There are a few sensors which can fail on the car. The O2 sensors, the oxygen sensors can sometimes fail, but uh, they're not difficult to change and they're not tremendously expensive to replace. Now head gaskets, they can sometimes fail on the car, mainly the rear head. 
just because that's where the hottest point of the engine can be. So just make sure that your coolant's nice and clean, you've got a nice smooth idle, smooth idle and um, there's no faults with that. What I also say, the higher mileage cars, if they haven't had an engine rebuild, budget in for an engine rebuild on them because the valve stem seals can start to leak and you'll get puffs of smoke on startup from cold. And that's normally a sign that a, a valve stem seal is leaking oil into the engine while it's uh, sitting. Um, engine rebuilds are expensive. You can immediately say sort of three grand for an engine rebuild. So these are expensive cars to fix when things like this go wrong. So there we go guys, that is the 147 GTA Buyer's Guide done. I've probably forgot several things, but I will put some more in the comments below if needed, and I'm sure some of the guys that own GTAs will put some more as well. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. And as with all my videos, if you've got this far through it, please consider subscribing. Also, please hit that like button and also the dislike button if you don't like something, but please let me know in the comments below why you didn't like it and I can try and improve it. So yeah, thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video.